Hello guys, welcome to Easy Bio. Today's video is going to be about control and communication. To understand this video, you will need to know about systems. If you don't, I will put my video about it in the iCard. The system we're going to focus on today is called the nervous system. In order for ourselves to communicate efficiently with one another, our body has systems in place. This ensures that all our cells function properly so that we don't die. The nervous system is made up of types of cells called neurons. They can also be called nerve cells. The definition you might want to take note of is that neurons are the building blocks of the nervous system. So just like how cells are the building blocks of any organism, neurons are the building blocks of the nervous system specifically. Neurons are specialized cells that are able to communicate really quickly between different parts of the body. They can do this by transmitting electrical impulses. But there isn't just one type of neuron. There are three different types of neurons that are all specialized to do different things. Sensory neurons, interneurons, and motor neurons. They perform their jobs in this order, but I will come back to that later though. So there are two types of nervous systems, the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system. Today we're going to focus on the central nervous system, but if you want to learn more about the peripheral nervous system, I'll put a link down below for you. The central nervous system is made up of the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. What exactly is the point of the CNS? Their first job is to process sensory information. This is where the sensory neurons come into play. The sensory neurons are actually connected to sense organs, so organs like eyes, nose, ears, tongue, and skin. These sensory neurons then send electrical impulses to the CNS. The CNS then processes that information. Their second job is to coordinate the body's response. So this is where the motor neurons come into play. The CNS can transmit electrical impulses along the motor neurons to glands and muscles. Muscles respond really quickly by contracting, whereas glands respond more slowly by releasing chemicals. We're going to learn a little bit more about how all of this works very soon, so don't worry if you're kind of confused right now. Right, so now let's learn about the most complex organ in our body, the brain. Let's start off with the basics. There are three main parts of the brain that you need to know right now. The cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the medulla. The cerebrum is the area of a brain that is concerned with conscious thoughts, memories, and your emotions. The cerebellum is the area of a brain that controls a balance and coordination. A way to remember this is to highlight the word bell. Cats usually have bells. What are cats good at? Balance. They can walk on really thin, lined edges and have great coordination. When I was learning this, that's how I thought of it and I haven't ever forgotten it. So it kind of works. The medulla controls your heart rate and breathing rate. Right, so another way to remember this is to think of the word medulla. Medulla sounds like metal, right? What's something you can do to win a medal? Sprinting. When you sprint, your breathing rate and heart rate increase. So medulla... Metal, sprinting, breathing rate, and heart rate. Okay, so now let's learn about reflexes. But what exactly is a reflex? I'm sure you've heard of it before, but do you really know what it means and how exactly it happens? A reflex is a really quick reaction to a stimulus. A stimulus is simply anything an organism can sense. What you need to remember is that reflexes are not voluntary and do not involve the brain. The reason why reflexes happen is to protect the body from harming itself any further. It doesn't prevent you from harming yourself. For example, if you touch a really hot pan, your body would immediately jerk away from it. You may have already burned your hand, but thanks to your reflexes, you didn't sustain even worse damage. So how does it work? Remember when I spoke about sensory inter and motor neurons earlier in this video? Well, they play a key role in reflex actions. But first, we need to learn about what receptors are. 
Receptors are types of specialized cells that can detect a change in the environment, so basically a stimulus. Okay, now we can continue. Going back to the hot pan analogy, let's say you touched a hot pan. Now your reflexes have to kick in to protect you from harming yourself any further. What happens? Well, the receptors in your hand detect the change in the environment. So basically, they realize that your hand is burning and that you're in pain. Electrical impulses are then transmitted along the sensory neurons. The goal here is to basically tag team the interneuron. When the electrical impulse reaches the end of the sensory neuron, it can immediately go onto the interneuron. There's a small gap between the neurons called the synapse. To cross the synapse, you need chemical messengers. So, chemical messages are released, then finally the electrical impulses can travel along the interneuron. The same happens again. When the electrical impulse reaches the end of the interneuron, chemicals are released and the electrical impulse can travel along the multineuron. This time, the destination is the muscle, in this case your arm. It doesn't go to the brain. Just like before, chemicals are released across the synapse. This time, electrical impulses don't happen. The chemicals simply cross the synapse to the muscle, causing it to contract. So your arm is able to contract and move itself away from the hot pan. All of this happens in an insanely short amount of time. That's crazy. It just goes to show how fast these electrical impulses really are. Okay, so we've talked about muscle. Now, let's talk about glands, which are really important for hormonal control. But first, what are hormones? Hormones are types of chemical messengers. The glands that produce hormones are called endocrine glands. Endocrine glands release hormones into the bloodstream where they can bind to cells. Hormones work a lot like enzymes maybe because they're both made of proteins. Hormones work by binding to cells with receptors that are specific to them, kind of like enzymes binding to substrates with active sites specific to them. Hormones are really important for various things, but the one we're going to focus on today is blood glucose regulation. The amount of glucose in your body has to be constant and at a certain range. If it's too high, you might feel really tired or thirsty. If it's too low, body cells won't be able to get as much glucose. Glucose is really important for respiration, and so less glucose might mean that your body won't produce as much energy during respiration. You might feel irritated or even weak. So it is extremely important to keep it constant. But how does our body keep our blood glucose concentration under control? The answer lies with two hormones, insulin and glucagon. You've probably heard of one of them before, insulin. Diabetes is a really common issue right now. Type 2 diabetes occurs as a result of cells becoming desensitized to insulin. Type 1 diabetes, however, occurs as a result of the body being unable to produce insulin. To help type 1 diabetics, we can give them daily doses of insulin. But what exactly is the role of insulin and glucagon? Well, first, you need to know that they are stored inside an organ called the pancreas. But the target cells for them are found inside the liver. So now for the roles. Insulin lowers blood glucose levels. When the glucose levels are too high, the pancreas releases more insulin into the blood and lowers the amount of glucagon being Insulin converts glucose into glycogen, which is then stored into the liver. So if insulin lowers blood glucose, then glucagon increases blood glucose. When it's too low, the pancreas releases more glucagon, which converts to glycogen, remember glycogen is stored in the liver, back into glucose, increasing glucose concentration. Remember, this can only happen because liver cells have the target cells for their hormones, so they have the specific receptors that complement the hormones. 
If you're still a little bit confused, this diagram is a really good representation of how all this works. Glucose increases, pancreas releases more insulin, glucose decreases, pancreas releases more glucagon. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope you're able to understand even just a little bit better about reflexes and hormone control. My next video will be about reproduction, so stay tuned until then. Bye!